Christmas. We are here, ready to celebrate Christmas. We look good with you. Yeah, we got yeah. dressed up for the occasion. Looking handsome. We, if you don't, we actually went all out. So not only do we look good, if you look out in the night sky of Clarksburg, even the Robinson Grands is celebrating this with the flashing lights. Yeah, we went all expenses out. So uh, yeah, budget people, don't worry, but we got it covered. We're good. Yeah, it's going to be a Red fun night. Lights. It's great. Yeah. Thank you, weirdos, for joining us. If you would, go ahead. Uh, drop down in the comments on Facebook. Let mm. us know that you're watching with us. Like and share this out to all your friends. Maybe even tag a couple people that you want yes. to join us for this awesome Christmas episode. Uh, we want to start things off with some jokes. Yeah, right? some Christmas dad okay. jokes. I don't know if I can make you laugh. Let us good. know if you think any of these are funny. No, yeah. So my, I was thinking as I was writing them, my new favorite thing on the podcast is telling dad jokes and Phil doing his fake laugh. <laughs> when he's like, oh, 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 slaps his knee a little bit. All right, so uh, not so much of a joke. I heard about this poor snow globe. Oof. Uh, he got really scared this Christmas season. Oh, no. He was really shaken up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about this? You know where Santa keeps his big red suit? In his claws, it. Ah, uh, yeah. That's claws a good one, right? it. I'm going to take a selfie. You're doing a selfie on. with everybody? Let's see. You're going to get a behind the scenes look there of our set. There you go. There it is. It's beautiful. All right. So we'll tag all of you um, all in that too. Bad attitudes, just like Scott. I do have a bad uh, attitude. Which reindeer has the worst attitude? Oof. It's Rudolph. It's really rude. Uh. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. They're just fake laughs. I tried to break it up a little bit there. <laughs> Rudolph. All right, I'll give you guys one more. Uh, you know, Christmas has its own alphabet. It does it? Yeah, it's only 25 letters. There's no L. <laughs> yep, that's I think that it. That was a real laugh that's from Scott. It. I don't yeah. I, no. I haven't it's, gotten one from you. Like, it's ever. tough to get a real laugh out of those type of things. Yeah. Mm. All right. How we doing on we got anybody commenting on Facebook? Yeah. We'd love to give some shout outs to you weirdos before we Yvonne says really nice suits. So that they're, they're yeah, we look good. I think we look pretty awesome. Uh let's see Jessica Wagner, wear those on Christmas Eve. Hmm. Probably not. I might do it. I I might do it. I would if Josh does. I know Phil won't. I'll no. do it 100%. <laughs> of the three of us, the one who's most professional is Phil, so, which is scary. Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you can get away with anything when you're like the, the next gen pastor. It's almost expected. <laughs> it's expected. Something like this. Might as well yeah. like wear sandals with it too. So. Yeah. I see some other people watching. Michael Yost is watching. There Brianna we go. Nicole and Brittany Conover. Let said us know that you're she in shared. there. Uh, hello to you, my friends there. Uh, everybody else who's watching, drop in the comments. Let us know who's watching with you and uh, continue to share this out as well. Uh, Yvonne is daring me to wear it on Christmas Eve. I, uh, I, that's double dog dare you. I might just go ahead and commit <laughs> to it here in a second. I don't know. I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I'm dreaming. Of a weird Christmas, just like the ones I used to know, where your faith glistens and weirdos listen to the sound of weirdness on each show, on each show. I'm dreaming of a weird Christmas with every episode we hear. May your faith, may your faith, may your faith be weirder and bright and make sure you hit like and subscribe no, that, was, that was beautiful yeah, yeah. take that, that Bing Crosby we're better than you <laughs> <laughs> dude that was pretty awesome dude, anytime Scott is joining with yeah, the song it yeah. feels like a special occasion absolutely <laughs> like, he different. was on there too I, I know thought, I thought yeah. it sounded good I was about ready to cough like in that reverse <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Yost is not impressed by our jokes by our um, 
Well, let us know your best one, Jessica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Challenge your on you now. Joke? Theo liked the jokes. I'm <laughs> I sure. Bet he did. I'm I bet favorite. he did. Awesome. Uh, see, my mom is watching. Hey. Hello, mom. Hi, mom. Uh, Lisa Angie. Williams hopped on here. We got Liz Pig on here. Man, all kind of friends. You guys continue to share this out. We are so glad that you joined us for our Christmas yeah. episode. If you don't comment, comment, you weren't actually here. So <laughs> we got to see you down there. Hey, we got some awesome, merry, jolly facts, weird facts for you today. Who wants to start off? Well, I just realized... And all the things I was supposed to do to set it up, I forgot to put Phil's, Phil's pictures yeah, in here. Yeah, you need so the pictures. Oh. One second, so you guys yeah. can you know, do I your can thing. I can start. I got a pretty decent uh, chunk here at the beginning. Did you know that Santa Claus was real? What? What? Wait. People believe that he's not? Yeah. Yeah. He actually is a, was a real person. He's dead. Wait, a what? long time ago, though. Man, yeah, I saw him at yeah. Bass Pro Shop the other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Santa Claus, which is a form of the Dutch name for St. Nicholas, uh, uh, was a real person back in the 300s uh, AD. Uh, he had wealthy Christian parents in Patara, which is a harbor city in modern-day Turkey, and it's probable that Nicholas and his parents could trace their spiritual heritage to Apostle Paul, who stopped in Patara on his third missionary journey 200 years earlier. So this is a, a real deal, wow. you know, early Christian, St. Really Nicholas. Cool. His parents were devout believers who had long prayed for a child. There's also a, this is kind of weird, uh, there's a folk legend that St. Nicholas came out of the womb immediately speaking and saying glory to God. Not uh, so, ho, ho, ho. You guys yeah, didn't, didn't Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when he was uh, born, his parents devoted him to God. And as an only child, he was raised uh, with great affection and special at, uh, attention from his parents. And when he was still a young teenager, a plague struck his city, and both of his parents sadly died. And uh, a loss yeah, like this... like a Disney movie. Yeah, right. A loss yeah, like this might... destined for greatness. Yeah, it was absolutely. We're we still talking about him now. Uh, a loss like this might take some of us, you know, to struggle with that, uh, with our relationship with God, but it drew Nicholas closer. And uh, it also seems to have made his heart tender towards others. So Nicholas was left with a large inheritance and decided he would use it to honor God. And he developed such a good reputation in his region that he was chosen as the Archbishop of Myra. Uh, which is right near his hometown. When he was in his early 20s, uh, an indication uh, that's when it happened where, you know, and that was unlikely that he would have become a archbishop at such a young age and would have shown his wisdom and maturity. Uh, most likely he faced persecution in the early days of his Christianity because that was before Constantine uh, became the emperor. But once Constantine became the emperor, he brought all these... Uh, bishops uh, together, and they began to form the Nicene Creed, which is very similar to the Apostles' Creed that we're probably more f familiar with, but very there's a lot of uh, uh, overlap there. But during, this is my favorite part, during the forming of this creed as he's putting in his uh, ideas and, and all these other bishops are coming together, there's a man by the name of Arius who argued vehemently for the belief that Jesus was not equal with God, the Father, uh, but he was something lesser than God. And St. Nicholas got up, and he walked across the room, and he slapped Arius right in the face, and, uh, and then he went to jail for that until Constantine figured out that he was trying to protect the, the right type of doctrine. So wow. not only was uh, St. Nicholas a, here, uh, a real person, he was a from what we can tell, a very devout Christian, believed, loved Jesus. Um, so tell your kids this story of St. Nicholas, um, because the, the, who we get and the ideas that we're going to talk about here in just a little while actually come from 1823, uh, the Christmas poem called The Night Before Christmas. And most of what we think about comes from them. And interestingly enough, Coca-Cola's advertising of yeah. what Saint, uh, Santa Claus looked like. So, Interesting. Yeah. My conception of of Santa Claus as a kid was kind of freaky. Like a guy's watching you while you're sleeping, 
He yeah. knows when you're awake, and he yeah. breaks into your house by sliding down your chimney. 100%. Yeah. It, and then he puts presents under your tree. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's kind of well, weird. That made it okay with me. The presents but made it okay. I still like was thinking, like, can he see me right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, similar to that. I heard a story this week about how uh, if you're ever hiking, um, if you see a mountain lion, mm-hmm. okay? So you're on a hike, you mm-hmm. see the mountain lion, that means that it's not hunting you. And I was like, that's not, that doesn't make me feel good because I've never seen one. So I feel like one's just following me around all the time now because I've never seen it. So Santa Claus, mountain lions, they they always see you. They're, so of all the on, on scent. Uh, variations of Santa Clauses that we've seen throughout our lifetimes, like movies or whatever, who's your favorite? It's Tim uh, Allen is yeah, the Tim only Allen, answer. Tim Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Allen's a great Santa Claus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's pretty awesome. Uh, the one did you guys watch that animated movie, um, uh, Claws a yeah. couple years ago? Yeah, that was a pretty uh, Santa was pretty awesome. It was yeah, awesome, yeah. yeah. I like that one. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I like the Coca Cola, big, big mm. rosy cheek Santa. You know, uh, I, I didn't realize they had that big of a deal in like the image of we know of Santa mm-hmm. today. Yeah, um, that's that's pretty cool. That's how they got the red and white colors. Is that mm. why? Uh, I, for sure, we'll talk about some other uh incarnations if that's the right word, of Santa in other countries here in just a little while. Yeah, You'll see that that variants. red is not, yeah, the the overwhelming color. Nice. For his mm-hmm. suit. So I did some uh, traditions of different countries, different regions of the world. Uh, th- this first bit, I'm just going to talk about some pretty traumatic traditions. Like, I can't believe they do things the way they do here. Uh, so we have the Grinch, which is playful, and there, you know, there's a good redeeming story there at the end. But... Austria has Krampus. Uh, yeah. Have you guys heard of Krampus before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did a movie of Krampus, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. Kind of like a scary movie, wasn't it? It was a, a horror Krampus. movie. Krampus. Krampus. Yep. Krampus. Okay, we'll, right. we'll make a new one. Krampus. Krampus. Krampus, uh, Krampus uh, is half demon, half goat, typically <coughs> covered in chains. Absolutely terrifying. I remember going to see the movie with Candace, uh, but at the time I didn't realize that this was like built out of some real tradition. Like in Austria, it's a big deal. Like they talk a lot to their kids about, yeah, you know, like, yeah, if, if you're good. So, so we tell our kids, you know, Santa's either going to bring you presents or if you're bad, you're going to get coal. Mm-hmm. Um, they say if, if you, if you're good, you get Santa. If you're bad, you get a half demon, half goat. Yeah. That's going to come into your That'll room keep them and, in line. and hurt you. So, uh, they probably have really well behaved kids there. But while we're talking about traumatic Christmas experiences, I feel like it's becoming almost too much the norm for these videos of people putting on Grinch suits and oh, stealing yeah. their kids' Christmas. Yeah. Have you guys been seeing this? I had, I, yeah. I had seen one in like, I saw that one over and over and over again, but now I'm seeing it all the time. Mm-hmm. Parents are throwing on Grinch suits, busting the door open to their house like an intruder, Whoa. taking all the presents, and kids are jumping on him and punching him. Some of the kids are like hiding under tables and screaming. I'm like, I would never get over this. Absolutely. Confession. Uh, uh, you did it. No. I want Poor to. Sadie. <laughs> uh, if you all didn't see it, you need to go see it. We made our CBC Christmas video this mm-hmm. year with a Home Alone edition. I remember... Uh, asking or requesting last year after our last one, the elf one, to do a Grinch one mm-hmm. because I just really want to own a Grinch costume. Yeah, right. And like walk around downtown Clarksburg. I think it'd be fun. But then I saw those videos on TikTok. I'm like, yes, I want to do that. I want to go <laughs> over random people's houses from our church. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure Jacob Hill said he wants to do He showed me one of the videos. He's like, I really want to do this to my to my nieces. I'm like, oh, dude, that would be so much fun. Yeah, his but, nieces. Ask TJ <laughs> Hill. Not your own. If kids. he's okay, right? Uh, yeah. Who do we got in here? We got uh, Breland Roadheaver. Let us know if you're okay with Scott coming in in a Grinch suit, <laughs> wrecking Tucker and Renly's Christmas <laughs> as the Grinch. I guarantee you. That I saw a, a, an adult, or you know, <laughs> a, a dad do that with a turkey to this. Thanksgiving, he like buried him in leaves, but it was a very unsettling turkey costume. Oh, the, yeah. kid, the kid hated it. That's funny. Every minute of it. I read a one. So I knew you were gonna do a couple of traditions. So I want to throw in. So hope I don't take any of yours. Apparently, uh, back in 1974, uh, the fast food chain that some of us love and some of us don't called KFC. Mm. Did you see this one? Yeah, I've got it in my notes. Oh, you got it in your notes? Thanks. I'm sorry. That's no, okay. Uh, 
became a huge hit on Christmas as they started advertising Christmas meals in the country of Japan. Mm. And now it's become a whole big tradition. And they estimate 3.6 million families gather together and share a KFC bucket every year on Christmas Day. I like it. Yeah, so I... And I kind of want to adopt the tradition. You, know? <laughs> you go for it. Uh, so I read that it's such a big deal that uh, families in Japan order their KFC two months in advance crazy. to make sure that they can <laughs> have nuts. a Kentucky Fried Christmas. Uh, <laughs> even those who don't don't celebrate Christmas, uh, people start placing their orders two months ahead of time, That's so amazing. that between December twenty third and twenty fifth, yeah. they can fit a meal of KFC. I know you've there. been you've been overseas too, like couple of times I've seen, you know, American mm-hmm. fast food chains. The one I never anticipated seeing was KFC. Yeah, right. I'm I like, I'm walking, bigger, th- I'm walking through a downtown right? somewhere. I don't remember where it was. I'm like, really? I went to like KFC. KFC. I think I went to KFC in the Dominican Republic. Uh, hmm. And it was, it was okay. Yeah. Like, I think I had McDonald's in the airport one mm-hmm. time. And it was the different yeah. uh, variation McDonald's. That's like right. normal. I did a McDonald's in Paris. You got a Royale with cheese. That sounds <laughs> really good. Yeah. It's a quarter pounder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, different metric system. So uh, let's talk about some of these other, Josh kind of hinted at one of the versions of something like Santa in some countries. They take the negative reinforcement uh, uh, further with Krampus, uh, but the United Kingdom uh, more relies on Father Christmas, which is this version of uh, Christmas in Green, yeah, he seems like a happy hey, Kelly. He seems uh, happy. Yeah, like right. Green. So you'll notice also the the emphasis that it looks a lot like the ghost of Christmas present with that wreath on his head. Are, uh, wait, are the trees? Are, are those no, wings? they're they're just behind they, him. It looks like tree wings. wings. That would be pretty neat. <laughs> like Christmas yeah. tree wings on his back. So uh, the French do use the long uh, red cloak, and he does look a little bit similar. His name is Papa Noel. I remember uh, that one from... Uh, the Santa Claus. Yeah, movie. right. Yeah. At some of these, if you've not started watching the uh the actual the Christmas show on Disney Plus, the some of these characters come in there. Yeah. Um, so he asks the children to leave their shoes by the fireplace, and their hopes are that they'll get filled with goodies after mass on Christmas Eve. I just I need like dryer sheets in my shoes to like make them smell better. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Food yeah, in there. He also has a companion that comes along with him called Papa. Futard, uh, or the whipping father who next one? spanks any okay. children who have, I don't have a, I don't have a picture Thank of that. You. <laughs> spanks any children who have not behaved well. So they have mm. both sides. You've got the, the good Santa and the repercussions that happen after. I kind of like this next one is, uh, this is Russia. This is father frost and the snow maiden. Um, he's actually That's supposed to be much more pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. She kind of looks like Elsa. Yeah. Uh, He's supposed to actually be a wizard, um, but he does punish. Originally, he would punish naughty children by kidnapping them. Um, Again, much more harsh than American. Yeah, right. Takes him yeah. back out uh-huh. the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and he's, uh, you know, uh, he's softened over the years, though, too. You can see a little bit of that, like, Slavic uh, Odin kind of idea there, too, with that, with that one. Uh, let's do one more, and I'll let you guys do some some other facts, and then we'll tackle some of these other ones. They get weirder as it goes. Uh, this is the Swedish uh, Tomte. And the mask he, got me. Yeah, he's a, not a person. He's a creature based in Swedish folklore, uh, supposed to be like a dwarf-like being with the appearance of a garden gnome, and uh, wow. he guards farmhouses from bad luck. That actually might be more frightening to me than Krampus. <laughs> yeah, he is a, was, <laughs> was originally somewhere. associated with the devil uh, in oh. some way. So, but now has softened and become Santa Claus's friend. So. He went from a church patriarchal hero to <clears throat> associated with a devil. Yep. Man, that was a real quick slope. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple more. We'll rush through here. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, I'll let one of you guys tackle some. So, uh, I just asked in the comments if we had any cat fans out there. Uh, I knew my mom would jump in there. Uh, let's see a couple other people too. Uh, the Yule Cat. You guys heard of the Yule Cat? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. I don't think I wrote down where this was. I think it was somewhere in Europe. Uh, the Yule Cat is not your average Christmas kitten, uh, but he cares deeply about fashion. So dating back to the 19th century, this vicious monster, which is portrayed as a giant, giant cat, will eat you on Christmas Eve if you don't have new clothes to wear. Ooh, so the Yule man. Cat was meant to encourage farmers to finish shearing their sheep before the holidays. 
Uh, he needed an offering of wool in order to be satisfied. So <laughs> donning your new Chris- Christmas sweater on Christmas Eve was encouraged so you didn't get eaten by like a Godzilla-sized cat. <laughs> the Yule crazy. cat. So, that's, I thought that was a fun That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, did you see the one about the Czech Republic and the shoes? Uh, uh, I don't remember if okay, I read Okay, so that. we're good then. I, now I'm like freaked out that we're going to steal all of yours. Fun fact, Josh, if we ever had to re-record an episode, Josh stole all of my stuff <laughs> multiple times. I did a couple um, times. <laughs> yes. Anyways, in the Czech Republic, you know, if you go to a wedding, uh, it's commonplace at the end of a wedding for the bride to take the bouquet and throw it over her shoulder. And whoever catches it, what was the kind of the whole thing was that they would be the ones who would eventually get married next. Right. In the Czech Republic, a Christmas tradition is very similar, but a a married woman will go out her or not a married woman, a single woman will go out on her front step of her house, turn around and throw a shoe over her shoulder. If the shoe is pointed back at the doorway, she's to go back in and put a hat on because she's going to get married that year. Huh. If the shoe points anywhere else, it's bad luck. Now, hmm. I, I'll be honest. When I first started reading, I thought it was almost going to be like spin the bottle. Like whoever yeah, the right. shoe was pointing at, that's, that's you got to marry. marry. Yeah, yeah, but that would be a, that's a how better. Me and Candace did it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my last, uh, I thought this was hilarious. I, I was seeing all these different traditions from different countries, and then I got to America. <laughs> And I thought this was hilarious. They have Yule cats and and Krampus. Here's what they attributed to American tri- Christmas tradition: televised fireplaces. That's yeah, awesome. Right behind so, us. <laughs> Scott asked me. He said, "Hey, can uh, I think we might do a one of those ongoing fireplace graphics, like videos, yeah. uh, you like you can find on YouTube?" Um, so that's what they had for America. Was that this? This was <laughs> such a strange tradition. That mm-hmm. Americans put mm-hmm. their fireplaces on a TV instead of doing real ones. So I, I saw. Uh, uh, congratulations, yeah. guys. I saw we a thing are on, boring. Uh, I can't remember. It was like TikTok or something where they were doing a home renovation. They were wanting to put a fireplace in, but instead of actually putting an actual fireplace in, like they had the whole frame and they actually put the TV in the insert and they just turned on the <clears> fireplace, like Yule Log thing. That's great. My favorite Yule Log one is the uh, one from uh, Arendelle on Disney Plus from Frozen. You can have. Did you know you can do that? There's like a. I'm not that big oh, of a nerd. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I've seen that one before. <laughs> Be brave. Yeah, Sully's not really into Frozen too much. Uh, not yet. He, he kind of moves out dude. of that phase. <laughs> More into Ninja Turtles. Uh, the, my, the, the other one I thought was interesting as far as traditions around the world, uh, the one that was in Greenland kind of made me grossed out. I mean, I've, I've ate a lot of weird things in my life, but this is interesting. So a Greenland tradition is a delicacy called Matic and Kiviak. Uh, mm-hmm. Matic is whale skin with some blubber attached that is supposed to be chewed, but often just swallowed as it's a little tough. And apparently, it tastes like coconuts. That's the okay. Kiviak is made from the raw flesh of ox, which is a small Arctic bird. Uh, they the ox are buried in seal skin a long time before Christmas and then dug up to eat when they have reached an advanced stage of decomposition. I don't fancy it, like you guys apparently don't. Don't worry, it's also sometimes accompanied with a usual or barbecued caribou on the menu. That I'll take that. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do some barbecue. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you can get that like a Cabela's. Like, I had but. a uh, bison burger the other day. It was pretty like good. Bison uh, to- good. Uh, Chloe got a um, elk burger, and it I've was not the, that good. It's, that's tougher. Is it that was, more like deer meat, I guess? Yeah, it yeah. T- it, t- it, t- it, it kind of had that gaminess, mm. like, and it was not real tender. The bison was good. Uh, so let's go on to our Santa uh, variants. Uh, the <laughs> Netherlands has Sinterklaas. And center? He, yep, Center. Uh, mm. S I N T E R. And he comes riding into town on a white horse. He's very uh, noble looking. Um, the beard is. This also the beard sounds like is, a Disney movie. Yeah. Also, I mean, he looks what a little hero. bit like he puts a priest, on that. Uh, right? Yeah, he's got like a Pope hat on, too. Kind of a nutcracker. Um, uh, he knocks on doors and brings gifts to good children. See, much, much better. He has like. Courtesy. I'm going to knock but on your door. Oh, never mind. He's no, accompanied no. by worse. Grumpus, which is close <laughs> to what you said earlier. Ah. And Grumpus rattles chains at naughty children and threatens to kidnap them. So <laughs> there's always the good guy and the bad guy. We need to read that one. Did anybody do Belschnickel? Uh, that's next. Oh, okay. Uh, got go Germany has Belschnickel, and he is a loud, cantankerous <laughs> guy dressed in furs <laughs> and carrying a bundle of birch <laughs> switches. Uh, he visits children in the week before Christmas, asking whether they've been nice or naughty in the preceding year. And some believe that Belschnickel is a combination of Santa and Krampus, that they nice. kind of melded those things together. Which That's not what Dwight says. It's impish, impish or, or admirable. admirable. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Impish. 
<laughs> <laughs> couple Little more. Mistakes. They get gradually weirder and weirder here. Uh, Finland has the Yule Goat. We had a Yule Cat already. Uh, Finland has the Yule Goat, which was a malevolent spirit associated with the North god Odin, who knocked on doors demanding gifts and leftovers from the Yuletide feast. Uh, but now it's much uh, more uh, friendly, um, and instead we'll inquire, are there any well-behaved children here? And hand out presents. Uh, he drives a sleigh, which I didn't understand this. Uh, the Yule Goat drives a sleigh pulled by reindeer that does not actually fly. So I, the run, goat is getting around. pulled by reindeer, I think. They don't fly. I don't know. There's no way a goat can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting drunk. <laughs> uh, Catalonia uh, has the Tio de Nadal, uh, which is one of the cuter uh, versions of Santa Claus. Do you see this, Josh? Perhaps the most fun-loving tradition on the list here. It's I, a, I love that. It's a log with a painted smiley face. I who, might make one of those. Who defecates presents. <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> making one of those. And the children feed him nuts and dried <laughs> fruit, fruit in the days leading up to Christmas well, while, while keeping him warm under a blanket. And on Christmas Eve, the children beat poor Tio with sticks and sing a rather graphic song about bodily functions. And the next morning, the children find that he has defecated a pile of gifts and sweets. <laughs> that is my new favorite Christmas yeah, Forget tradition. Santa Claus. Dude. Tio is way <laughs> better. Weirdos, be looking out for my Instagram. <laughs> I'm, I might make one of those. This year. I'll help. That's that was awesome. Uh, two more. We got the uh, Iceland has Yule Lads. They're 13 mischievous Iceland elves, Icelandic elves, who instead of making toys... They play tricks on children, and they're gradually like worse and worse. Uh, uh, what? How do you say this? Parasleki, for sure. instance, will steal your leftovers. Okay, that sounds <laughs> almost like Me. a helpful thing. <laughs> yeah, like thanks. Yeah. Uh, while Gryla, the mother of the thirteen-year-old lads, will kidnap you if you behave badly. So a lot of kidnapping, um, and then lastly, I know there's a strong Italian uh, presence. Maybe those of you. Uh, that our Italian can tell me whether you recognize La Bafana. La Bafana is a good-natured witch who flies around on a broomstick, uh, who uh, does you know, nice things for good children in Italy. Hmm. And she's been fo- uh, part of folklore in Italy since the 8th century. Oh, wow. Uh, according to the story, she, uh, the three wise men, while they were trying to find Jesus, came upon La Bafana and asked her to join her and uh, join them in finding Jesus. But she said no at first, but she did give them shelter and fed them. And then they left and she declined to go, but then decided she changed her mind. And then has just every night ever since kind of been looking for Jesus and giving gifts to all over Italy. So in the, in the new uh, Santa Claus show, the yep. Tamalan show, she's actually in La Bafana mm-hmm. as a character in the show. Uh, yeah. She's like the crazy witch who also happens to live around the North Pole. And this doesn't spoil anything. Someone's gonna throw it out there, but she's or was originally a part of the uh, the the what they call them, the legendary figures like the Easter Bunny, uh, Santa Claus, Tooth uh, Fairy, Tooth Fairy. Like she was originally part of that like council, mm. uh, but then was kicked out of for some reason. I don't remember what. But, huh. So there's a lot of fauna. That's pretty cool. I uh, <laughs> real quick, um, my passion is movies, and like Josh and I have been. Prom- I promised Josh like. At least 47 times in the last year that we're gonna have a movie night we get to do it we have about like 47 movies that we have to watch mm-hmm. so it's a it's i mean new year's resolution we'll watch one every day okay <laughs> empty words uh someone asked on uh it's a who was it? job on facebook uh it was actually uh cheryl klein says you all get paid to do this yes this is what we do this is all that we do <laughs> i'm just kidding um, uh, but hey, anyways Titus thomas jumped in there Titus. he is glad to glad to have you with us but i want to talk about some movies but like first what's your go-to christmas movie Home Alone. Okay. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is up there. So I like a, to- uh, a ton of them. Yeah. Like the best Christmas movie ever, and your opinion doesn't matter, is The Muppet Christmas oh, Carol. okay. It's up there. It's, it, no, it's not up it's there. It's number one. <laughs> it is the best. Yeah. 
ever. It it's is, the best. It is super good. The it's other ones are good. I like Home Alone. I like National Lampoons. Yeah, National Lampoons is second for me. I, I was I was prepared to throw down and fight you if you were going to say A Christmas Story was number one. Oh, that's the worst movie I, I've ever seen. Big, I hate that movie. Uh, so I grew up, that was one that we watched every year. I, I, I love I, that movie. I, I won't it. watch it's it. It's not a top three for me. So I watched Muppet Christmas, Christmas Carol mm. for the first time last year. Because really? Because you guys talked about it yeah. so much. And I agree. I think it's, it's amazing. hands down the best of the... Christmas Carol variations. Yeah. I read, uh, it's so, good. so Michael it's Caine so good. is in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I read that he took the whole thing so seriously that he was acting as if he were on a Broadway set. Sure. He, like, or a London. He uh, take it. Because he, he was yeah. a stage actor at one right. point. So he's like, I'm going to take this that seriously. Right. Like with my vocals and everything, my performance. So he took yeah. it very, like, how do you take it seriously sitting next to a Muppet? Right. Like, that was pretty impressive. Jen Barnes agrees with us. The, bu- the Muppets. Now, a second, as far as Christmas carols go. The Mickey Christmas Carol Mickey is pretty awesome. Actually really fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I like the uh, newer cartoon one with Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Uh, it's I, okay. It was really good, too. Yeah. But it's the, a little the unsettling. Muppet, the, old, the old ones are really... Uh, <laughs> it, oh, it's like kind of scary. Yeah. A little bit. It's kind of like Polar Express. That's another movie I don't like either. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't like Polar, Polar Express. Polar Express doesn't belong... Should not be in anyone's top five. Uh, <laughs> it's good for those days at the end of the semester at school. I feel like we always watch it. Or I would love to go uh, on the, the train, that oh, yeah. the physical train mm-hmm. with my kids, but we've never done it. They're doing a prequel to the... Polar Express to tell you more about the Tom Hanks character. Hmm. Hmm. Before you move on from the Muppets, I, I had a fact uh, on the Muppets Christmas Carol. Uh, the flowing look of the ghost of Christmas past was actually achieved by submerging the puppet in a yeah, water Yeah, you can tank. tell. Yeah. That's what they did with the puppet. They put it in a that tank of creepy. water. And then it yeah. like... Do you, looks do you remember like the SpongeBob Christmas one where Santa Claus, it's the same thing. Uh, I think it's the claymation one. So, yeah, you'll have to go and watch it at some point. I have to look that uh, up. We always watch the SpongeBob Christmas ones, too. Not us. Uh, <laughs> you mean? I was like, I've never oh, seen you it. You guys have we movie watched movies, movies all the time. Uh, jerks. Uh, but I, so instead of doing, you know, our favorite ones, but go ahead and tell us your favorite ones in the comments. I want to talk about what is considered the worst Christmas movies of all time. Mm-hmm. So this is not Scott's opinion. So I'm not putting a Christmas story at number one, uh, even though I would like to. This is according to you, the fans and critics on IMDb, all right? So it's a website about movies. So number one voted worst Christmas movie of all time uh, is Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. Hmm. It came out in 2014. Uh, It got a 1.3 out of 10, and then uh, critics gave it a score of 18 out of 100. Second, which I'll be honest, I've never seen this. As much as a fan as I am, I have never seen the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's I so didn't bad. know that existed. Did you uh, not? It's a is Chewbacca. It like an older one. It's from it's from 1978. It was right after the first movie came out. Wow. What is it called? Something Day. It's it's uh, Earth, it's something uh, about Kashyyyk. Like something. It's like it's for Chewbacca. Chewbacca and he, family. his family's in it, and hmm. it's really it looks but really weird. Most of it, I've watched a good chunk of it because Noah and I uh, were interested in seeing what it was about because it was so bad. But most of it is them talking, like you know. Brr, Whatever, and with no subtitles or anything, oh, that's and it's awesome. like a long they part just leave where it you up just to you. yeah, whatever right, you yeah. think they might say. Uh, number three, <laughs> which I have seen and I actually own, I was trying to find it to like bring it here so you guys could watch it sometime, is from 1996, starring Hulk Hogan, Santa with muscles. Mm. Dude, uh, we that okay? Our first official movie night is gonna be that one because you've to- told me about that for like a year now. <laughs> yeah, and I'm it's I'm Santa Claus and muscles. It's a so the caption says a heartless millionaire believes he's Santa Claus after an accident renders him with amnesia. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's trying to shut down an orphanage, uh, and uh, one of the kids who's at the orphanage is actually played by Mila Kunis, which was one of her very first movies that she ever starred in. And Santa's running away from the cops. He's hiding in a in a in a a mall and he puts a Santa Claus costume on and he falls down and hits his head and he thinks he's Santa Claus who happens to have a lot of muscles. Hmm. So I could do that. It, it grossed $0.2 million. Yep. Wait, is that like 200, $200,000? $200, $200, That's funny. I love That's it. A better way to say it. Uh, number four, which I also own. So I actually have that Santa, Santa with muscle. I have a four part uh, DVD Santa with muscles. I haven't watched the other ones. It's Santa Claus conquers the Martians which is from 1964, says the Martians kidnap Santa Claus because there's nobody on Mars to give their children presents. Mm-hmm. So, which I think it sounds like a little bit like the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special oh, that came out I, last that's year. That's why Elon Musk wants to go to Mars so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he just cares about the kids. And then uh, the last one I'll throw out there, which I have seen. I'll, actually, this one's number five, and there's a sequel that's number seven. Uh, number five 
is Home Alone 4. Yeah. Which just came out in 2002. And then number oh, yeah. seven was Home Alone 3. Both of them were just Neither terrible. had Macaulay Culkin. I actually never it. watched either oh. of those. Yeah, because Macaulay Culkin was I think I might have seen three, but not four. Yeah. Um, the yeah. first first two were the only ones you really the only other The only other movie that I uh, was surprised... I, I, I've seen these lists before. This one's a little bit further down on IMDb, but there's other ones where this was number one. There's Christmas with the Cranks. Dude, with, I really like ter- that I'm like, yeah, like okay. It. Right, yeah. Like, like, Tim we, Allen really we, we makes me watch laugh. one every year. Yeah. It's, I'll be honest, the only part of the, the whole movie that bothers me is Dan Aykroyd. Mm-hmm. Like, you can tell he's not taking the movie seriously yeah. whatsoever, but Tim Allen always makes me laugh. Yeah. And I'll yeah. watch anything with Tim Allen. It's a good one. It's a good but one. There's your uh, <clears throat> worst movies of all time, according to Christmas and on IMDb, so... Let's have some movie nights and watch those ones. Yeah. If your kid's like, hey, I want to watch a Christmas movie, I recommend Santa Claus and Muscles. Well, mm-hmm. you mentioned uh, which one flopped super hard. What was that? Uh, like 0.2 million. That was that, right? Muscles? Yeah, that was Muscles Santa. No, uh, yeah. So another Christmas movie that absolutely flopped in the box office, It's a Wonderful Life. It did yeah. terrible. Oh, that's another that. amazing It came movie. out. I think that's Phil my number two that movie. One up. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Phil brings that one up every year. How it's <laughs> that was a, a must family watch. tradition. We always watch that one on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I've probably only actually watched it one time. Have like, you guys start to finish. ever done? I think you guys do it. Do you do Chinese food on Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty big uh, thing that people do, mm-hmm. especially Chinese in food? bigger s- cities. Yeah, I yeah. think we do uh, our, our tradition. Uh, so we'll go see a movie mm-hmm. on Christmas mm-hmm. Day. Uh, the best was when there was a period of several years where it was like Lord of the Rings, Lord of the, or the the Hobbit movies were yeah. all out, Chris. And then mm-hmm. I went from the Hobbit to the Star Wars uh, sequels. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I know I was going to get a movie that I loved. Right. Yeah. And then another year was like, uh, it was Adam's Family 2 or something. Like, it was just like, uh, oh, man. man. Yeah. Was, we went downhill quick. It yeah. may not have been that one. Katie will correct me. I don't remember what it was, but it was like, <clears> it was just awful. So I worked at a theater for four years and always worked on Christmas Day. And jerks like you would come in and say, oh, I hate that you have to work today. But it's because jerks like you went to the theater. I, I didn't say it. <clears throat> I'm just thought, kidding. I would probably go now that I don't want to. I thought about it, but then got my popcorn and I was happy. There you go. There you go. So. Uh, a couple more movie you could quit. things I'd like to hit. Yeah. No, I <laughs> loved it. And I like being there on the holidays. It was a lot of fun. Um, I just had that <clears throat> philosophy about coming to church for you. Mm. Man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so in uh, the famous Grinch with Jim Carrey, uh, he worked with a CIA specialist who trained agents to survive torture in order to get through the <clears throat> the painful makeup process yeah. of putting that Grinch outfit on. So he worked with specialists who trained people to survive torture. That's how bad it was for him to put that. Uh, the man who was the makeup artist actually had to go into counseling afterwards because of how Jim Carrey treated him. Really? Like he said, he was just constantly like yelling at it because Jim Carrey is miserable. Yeah. Like they've said, like like I that's I love that movie. It's it's my top five, and I quote the movie year round. But that is one that I would love for another one to come out, like mm-hmm. to see another Jim Carrey. But he has said I would never put that stuff on again. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, I'll just throw one more at you guys. Um, so in Home Alone, one of my favorite characters is Fuller, who is the the younger cousin, oh. uh, who they talk about wetting the bed yeah, anytime a- he drinks. It's Kieran Culkin. Yeah, right. It's his yeah. brother. It's his, yeah. it's his little brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's the one that's the actually movie. acting now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, in Succession. Uh, mm-hmm. He was in the. And, he was uh, in the Mike show. Mike Kresge, shout out, and Waco Andy Walker. Also. Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. The yeah. David Koresh um, show. Huh. But yeah, that's uh, Macaulay Culkin's little brother, and don't give Fuller the Pepsi because he's gonna wet the bed. That's right. Yeah. There you go. We got any more facts? Nope. That's all I got. Wait. Let me look. Ooh. I don't think I do. <laughs> but then I got scared that I did. I don't have any more pictures, right? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, okay. have you guys, We I, this is one thing I didn't bring up. My mom tried to get us to do this tradition once uh, where it's a Christmas pickle. Oh, yeah, that you hide, I actually had that in my notes. You hide in the it. Christmas tree, mm-hmm. and whoever finds the pickle gets uh, a, a, a special gift. It's, I mm-hmm. think it's like a German thing. Like an extra thing. present. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I saw that one. I uh, that might be a cool one to do. I think that's more of a. I've heard of people doing. Sully that, would like that, like around here. Yeah, Sully, he'll find it. He likes pickles anyway, <laughs> but he likes sweet pickles though. Don't he? That Sully, <laughs> the little dill snap pickles. <laughs> all right, so um, I thought that we'd spend some time. You know, we're talking about all these you know, movies and traditions and all these different renditions and variants of of Santa Claus. Um, getting back to the real reason for the season. 
and talking about uh, King Jesus and how Jesus came to this earth for us. So uh, I want to talk about Jesus as king and and how he established his kingdom. And uh, so through history, there have been some pretty terrible kings who have ruled. I feel like uh, you guys hit on this a little bit in that prophets, priests, and kings. Like there's, mm-hmm. it just feels like when you open a history book, it's like oh, this king did what? <laughs> like, like they did the most insane things. You see, uh, you watch history documentaries, you read through the books, whatever it is. Uh, there have been some pretty terrible people who've been donned the title of king, uh, wearing the crown. Um, studying different the kings through history can be really depressing. Uh, there have been some seriously horrible people given power to rule over others, and. Uh, what we see to be historically true is that when humans are uh, are given that much power to rule over other people, uh, they're given those high levels of power. It takes a person of extremely high character to wield and steward that kind of power well, and rarely ever does it really mm-hmm. work. I mean, we see that like, you know, maybe this is kind of a weird analogy, but like mega church pastors, like that's sure, something yeah. we've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you're given this insane platform and like your character is not really there to match like the influence that you've been given, right? Um, Uncle Ben said it best when he told Peter Parker, "What? With great power comes great responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility." And uh, I think when we look at kings through history, very rarely do we see that they handled that well. That they could steward and and, and uh, have control over that kind of power in a way that was um, good and helpful. Uh, so one of the most not so kind egomaniac kings in history was King Herod, also known as Herod the Great. Now Herod was the Roman appointed king of Judea. Uh, he was not a Jewish, and he wasn't a fan favorite of the Jewish people. Uh, but what happened is he got in good with the Roman officials and the people in Rome who had high influence, uh, so they dubbed him to be king of the Jews. And the Jews didn't like him, and he was really insecure about his power being taken all the time. Uh, His only appearance in the Bible is in the book of Matthew. And here's what happens. This is in Matthew chapter 2, following the birth of Jesus. We see his appearance. What happens is the Magi, or the wise men, uh, these representatives from foreign nations, come to his area, and he asks what they're doing there. And they say... That's right after they met La Bafana. Oh, is she in the the Bible. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, So he asked what they're doing there. And they say, we're here because of the prophecies of the one who is born King of the Jews. And so Herod, the great hears this as a threat, right? Because he had been dubbed this title by the Roman officials to be King of the Jews. But what you have in Jesus was one who was born to be King of the Jews. Uh, So he hears this threat and To Herod, this little baby in a manger named Jesus all of a sudden is becoming the greatest threat to his throne, to his title, to his power, and Jesus needs to be eliminated. Uh, So this is when he orders the slaughter of the innocents, right? And we see this in the Bible where there was this decree that all kids under the age of two uh, would be killed. And this was really on brand for Herod. Like if you study more about his life and his rule, he wasn't afraid to kill anybody, man. And he was good at it. Mm, he did it. Family members did it a lot. He so he would kill wives. He would kill his sons. Anytime he felt like there was any kind of suspicion that somebody might be hungry for his power and his influence and his title, he would kill them. If even if they weren't really challenging him, he was super paranoid and insecure, and uh, that just came with having this title that he was not like really built to carry. Like he mm-hmm. he couldn't handle that. Um, so he constantly acted out in paranoia and insecurity to protect his status. Uh, he killed wives, he killed children. Uh, he would kill anybody who he thought posed a threat. And Jesus was one of those people because, you know, he had this title and he was proud of this, that I'm King of the Jews, but he was just given the title. Jesus was born into it. And that's what these magi, these wise men said is we're here looking for the one who was born Mm. King of the Jews. Um, I actually heard this fact today as I was looking into this. Uh, uh, he was so detested and also so unafraid of killing people. Uh, he feared that nobody would weep at his funeral when he was close to death. And so he had this order that like hundreds of innocent people be locked in a chamber. And upon his death, they would just murder all of them mm. to uh, to make the city weep and mourn. 
Jeez. so that there would Gosh. be sounds of weeping and mourning. Uh, I heard that it didn't actually go through once he died. Which is good. He's gone. Uh, how would he know? <laughs> but that's that's how unafraid he was, yeah. and also how detested he was, Man. Uh, and how hated he was by the Jews. So he was the king of the Jews by this undeserved title being given to him by Roman authority. Uh, but Jesus would be born the true king of the Jews by being God himself incarnate, come to humanity to usher in a new and better kingdom. So this Christmas, we celebrate the, this king coming to us, the one who left a throne in heaven to step into our mess, to step into our chaos, to, to put on flesh and deal with this problem of sin for us. And our king doesn't need to power trip and dominate anyone to prove that he's king, like all these kings through history, right? Anytime there's a threat, they've got to be eliminated. I've got to bully people, and I've got to really dominate people and rule over people to prove my authority. That's not the kind of king we serve. Uh, the king is just who Jesus is. Like, this is part of his character. He was there at creation with authority over all things. He's the king over all kings and over all kingdoms. And all the prophecy before had told us that there would be a true king who would come and his rule would never end and that his kingdom would be better. Mm -hmm. He would usher in a new kingdom that looked nothing like Herod the Great or any of these corrupt rulers through history. So Herod needed to force people through acts of violence and uh, through intimidation to respect and honor him. Uh, but that is not what the reign of Jesus looks like. It's not burdensome. It's light. Yeah. It's liberating. It's good for us. Uh, it's the beauty and the divine nature of Jesus that demands the worship of our hearts and makes us say gladly, declare that this is king. This is the king above all kings. So uh, I wanted to tell you guys a story. I was thinking, I remembered uh, when Candace and I were on our honeymoon, we got to spend a few days in Paris. And I wish I remembered the name of this building. Uh, the thing about Paris, the architecture, all the old buildings there, it made it my maybe one of my favorite cities I've ever been to in the world. Um, it was incredible. But there was this big, uh, just amazing structure uh, where a king used to stay. I don't know if it was, was it King Louis? Was he like mm -hmm. a French king or mm -hmm. something like that? Sounds right, yeah. Okay. I, I probably could have found some more on this, but there was a king who's... The orangutan. Yeah. That was King Louis. Yeah. <laughs> in the Jungle Book. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was him. that palace. It was him. He's, what was his famous saying? I want to be like you. I yeah. want to be like, <laughs> like you. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the live action, what's his name? Uh, Christopher Walken. Crushed yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah. so good. That's an Western underrated King movie. Movie. Just throwing that out there. It's a good one. Yeah, it's it's a so good. good. One. Uh, but there was this big, like, robust palace that this king would stay at. And it was designed in a way that when you were entering the courts where the king was, uh, the passage that you would go through to get there would get increasingly smaller and lower to the ground. So by the time you got into the courts, you were on your face, oh, on the wow. ground, kneeling in a posture of worship and bowing to the king. And I remember hearing that and thinking, man, I'm so glad that that's not the kind of king that I serve. Like you see these man-made kings who are dubbed these titles for you know a short amount of time mm -hmm. and they feel the need to force. I, I've got to find a way mm. to physically cripple people into following me. And then I see Jesus and I look at his character. I look at his love. I look at his compassion. I look at just who he is and it demands this response from my heart um, willingly. That yeah. This is the king that I'm going to serve for all of eternity. Right. Uh, so I just love, you know, again, in that instance, you see a king who needs to find ways to force his name to be great, to manipulate people into allegiance and uh, worship of himself. Well, Jesus rules completely differently. It's mm. the beauty of the gospel of Jesus that demands the worship of our souls. Uh, it's who God is that makes him the greatest king, the king of all kings, uh, so that when Jesus came, just in a manger in the dirt, the wise men would go to this king who was named king of the Jews and say, hey, we're looking for the one who was actually born to be the king mm -hmm. of the Jews. Yeah. You guys have any thoughts there? I uh, I just did a sermon over at the Clarksburg Mission. Shout out to you amazing people at Clarksburg Mission uh, called We Two Kings. You know, the old Christmas carol was We Three Kings, and it's mm -hmm. referring to the Magi, uh, which there's really not that necessarily that they were ever noblemen or uh, people of royalty. Or but even just, three. Huh? Or that there was even three, just three gifts. Um, but the story that I see in scripture is the story of two kings. You have King Herod, and then you got uh, King Jesus. And as mm -hmm. you're saying, you know, one was, you know, you may have hit this, and maybe I missed it. Who gave him the title of Herod the Great? 
Like, was it himself? I'm sure it was himself. I ha- it had to be himself. Like, I feel like it was one of those things. Like, he got up in the morning, yeah, looked in the mirror. You are great. I heard the not so great. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was, I remember he killed his mother in law, too. That yes. was another one of his crazy one things. One of his did. 10 wives. Yeah. Uh, uh, crazy. But, like, when you look at the story, you know, his mother in law was his wife or his oh, mother in law no, of, of, of one of his. Oh, okay. Of his well, he, killed, he killed a wife and a mother in law. You never know what those dudes back then. Yeah. But the story that you see in in that gospel is when they and shout out to uh, if you want to go look at our Advent devotional, uh, Sean and Lisa Freeman wrote specifically about what it means for Jesus to be king. So go check that out. Uh, but uh, when they come, when the Magi come to Jerusalem, they they're looking for this king. They go to Herod. Well, who does Herod summon? The religious leaders of the day, and they mm-hmm. said, "Hey, they're here looking for this king of the Jews. Do you know anything about that?" And like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. And that's it. Like, these men who, men who would have known that Jesus was coming, they knew exactly what city he was to be born in, but yet they have chosen to bow down and worship Herod. Mm-hmm. Like, they knew that the, the king, when you go back to Isaiah, like we talked about the past couple Sundays, the one that was going to be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. No, 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 we're going to settle for Herod the Great and continue. Maybe it was out of fear. I'm sure, sure. it was. Yeah. But, like, if they would have been the ones that followed the you know the word of God, like knowing this was happening, do you think they'd be the first ones sprinting to Bethlehem? Right. But it was these distant magi from the east coming to look for this mm-hmm. king to worship him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just kind of a, kind of a crazy turn of events in that story that I think we gloss over real quick sometimes. Hmm. Well, that's the other thing too. You got like the shepherds and yeah. then the magi, and it's all these people that were not the normal people that should have been looking for Jesus. Um, We've all heard that saying, absolute power corrupts yeah. absolutely. Uh, I looked up who that was. That was only in the 1900s really? uh, that Lord Acton, a British historian, said that. Um, but it shows you the those that grasp for power are not the type of people that we normally want to follow. And a real leader uh, is somebody that gives power mm-hmm. away. Um we've taken probably all taken some like leadership classes before and uh, I've done some in seminary and they talk about early on uh, you know, back when you're talking about with like King Louis, it was someone was born as a King and it was that it was a mantle that was passed from one to the other. And then once Kings began to fade away and you began to have democracy, then the idea was that, uh, the talent to be a leader was something you were born with. And they call this the great man theory uh, so that you were either born a leader or you're not born a leader. Um, and you have those talents or you don't have those talents. And, but really as we have progressed through, you know, mod modernity, modernity. <laughs> you know, I, I shouldn't use big words that I can't pronounce. Uh, <laughs> we have began to become closer and closer to what the Bible has told us from the beginning about what a leader should be popular, even in secular uh, places now is uh, transformational leadership, which is the leader is there to empower the follower Mm -hmm. and the leader is there to, uh, to give authority to the follower. And that's the type of people that we actually want to follow and that we want to be around. Um, And you see that contrast between Herod and to who people feared and who probably use guilt and shame and all those different types of thing. And uh, someone like Jesus, who constantly r- lifted people up mm. like sinners, uh, prostitutes, the poor, the leprous, the blind, the outcast, and lifted them up and gave them value and them. Um, and you see, that's the type of person that 2,000 years later, uh, no one's bowing to King Louis. And, and we have millions and millions and millions of people that bow yeah, to it's King Jesus. His character, the way that he, he walked divinely and changed everything about how we view kingship and those things. He didn't need uh, the influence within political sphere, uh, spheres, spheres, mm-hmm. political spheres. Uh, he didn't need to lower other people to elevate himself. Um, and that's what's so captivating about Jesus and what leads us to declare Jesus is Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, for anybody watching, I, I just challenge you this Christmas season, may, go beyond the Christmas story, beyond the birth of Jesus, and start walking through the Gospels. Look at the way that Jesus lived. Uh, look at his words. Look at his works. You, I, I promise you, your heart, you're going to start feeling your heart posture itself into worship at this 
this man who walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus. Um, so I, I wanted to throw in another quote there too, uh, uh, a Craig Rochelle thing. And maybe this is more a smaller scale. I know this was important for me when I, when I first moved here, um, you know, I was like, you know, still in Bible college, really excited to become a youth pastor. And I finally got my first taste of that when I moved here as an assistant youth director. And uh, I was so ready as I started Bible college to have like a title, right? Mm -hmm. A title of I'm a youth pastor, you know, and, and I, I'm still to this day, I'm so proud to have that title, mm -hmm. next gen pastor that I get to work with kids and teenagers. Um, but, uh, before you have that title and when you're hungry for that title, sometimes you, you focus too much on the title and less on who's really deserving of having a title like that. Right. And one of the things that Craig Rochelle says is uh, position gives you power to control. So like, ha having that title gives you power to control people. You can manipulate people. Position gives power to control. Trust gives permission to lead. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of goes along with that. Like who's, who's really worthy to lead? <coughs> it's not those who take their title and rule and, and dominate people. Mm. It's the people who build trust and and build others up. Uh, and those people just give you permission to lead. And mm -hmm. with Jesus, it's the what I know about Jesus and his character and what I've seen in scripture, um, I give him full permission to be Lord of my life mm. and to be king of my heart in every every area. And as we follow uh, you know, into being leaders, because we're all leaders. We all have influence. If leadership is influence, then we're all leaders. And in order to be the type of leader that Jesus was, that's what you seek, not the title, which we see Herod mm. grasped, but rather to ask yourself, who am I empowering? Who am I serving? Um, we get uh, asked every once in a while by different people, and most of the time it's completely sincere. It makes me cringe because I've thought a lot about this, but other people don't necessarily, but they ask us like, what is your title? Are you a reverend mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, like <laughs> father or holy father? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I always tell them pastor or minister are the two pastor means to, uh, shepherd. what is it? shepherd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, which the shepherd is there for the sheep and minister means to serve, uh, reverend means to be revered. And if you get it wrong, I'm not mad at you because I think that might end up being more of a, <laughs> uh, an area of yeah. ego and pride. Like, no, 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 no. But and, and uh, none of us, like, if you don't call us pastor no. in front of our name, we're not going to bat I actually, like, I, just, I prefer not. I, I agree. Yeah. I prefer, I th just for clarity, like if people are asking for a title, like sure, like that, right. if you insist on saying something like that, but I think all three of us would rather just be yeah. Josh, Phil, and Scott. Yeah, I, I'd rather be my, Josh. Did, uh, I think my mom is probably still in the comments. Have I ever told you she used to get on to me for calling you Phil? No, yeah. That's when great. I was a teenager yeah. in Phil's youth group, I remember I'd say like, oh, like I'm, I'm going to meet up with Phil. Or, uh, you know, Phil's expecting me to be there early to do this or something like that. And she'd say, you, you really need to, to respect him more and call him Pastor Phil. Right. So, uh, so the fact that we don't not call to put him you Pastor on blast Phil, on their mom. Yeah. I think it's funny. Well, kidding. the we people were... more that I have respected in my life are not the people that I've called Mr. or Pastor. They're the people that I call, you know, Scott or Josh or somebody. Because it, know, it it's separates. A, it's... it's a relationship, not a. Right. Because I don't want anybody to respect me because I have a position. Uh, I mean, you should respect the. The position of a pastor like we all you know yeah, might yeah. but i want you to respect me because you've seen something in me that is worthy of, right. of being respected which hopefully is in the small parts that i might look like jesus if, if yeah. prayerfully we, if we said to one of you like you called me josh and i said that's pastor josh to you, <laughs> to you. There's, like i cannot imagine that i'm leaving room for friendship and relationship <laughs> right. and for you to see me as just an equal person to do right. life with yeah, I, yeah. That's one of those things. I'm that up just here. Tends you're to down separate. here. Yeah, yeah. Like, like pastors and say, I'm a little higher than you are. You're down Ooh, here. Yeah. You need to respect and revere me. This Angie way. says here in the comments, your mom, <gasps> Josh says that you need to respect her more. <laughs> she said, you need to call her pastor, pastor mom. Uh, I'm sorry, mom. She said I threw her <laughs> under the bus. Uh, my mom. I appreciated it. No, it's, but that's the thing. You were trying. You didn't, that was my mom. Having the a lot of people grow up different than that, too. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that was hey, you need to have respect for this person, which I should res have respect. Sure. So yeah, that's not a a, uh, a knock on. And some on people my do mom, still but... insist on calling you pastor, and because it means something mm -hmm. special to them, I don't care. 
I just want people to know that that's not something yeah. that I. I literally desire. had this conversation last night. So uh, with Katie, with <laughs> she calls, <laughs> she calls Pastor me. Scott, <laughs> <laughs> Reverend. Um, no, we I had we have we have a family Bible study that we do on phone through the phone on Tuesday nights, and uh, we've been going through the Book of Ephesians. And Ephesians four, it talks uh, when it says, "So Christ Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to." equip as people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity. Um, and I said, that verse is why I do ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, that I feel like my calling is to equip people for the work of the mm -hmm. gospel. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't say, uh, there's a, I, there was one Bible translation. It may have been the original King James. Mm -hmm. There's a whole thing about the, the, uh, theology of the comma mm -hmm. that it said at one point, there was one translation that said that Christ gave them apostles prophets evangelists and pastors and teachers period oh. and it's like no that's not what it's for like he gave leaders to influence and train and equip mm -hmm. people for the work of the gospel mm -hmm. yeah. and so we were talking last night on the phone about like because we've all um have worked for bad leaders we've worked with great leaders i think i work with some amazing leaders now uh but you know how do you tell a good leader well, if the leader can turn around and see that there are people who genuinely want to follow them, mm. there's mm -hmm. something good going on. Yeah. Right. But like you're saying with King Herod, like if they're dragging people if to where they want to them to go. constantly tell people, I'm king, I'm yeah. king, I'm king. <laughs> yeah. Don't you know who uh, I am? I am your boss. Yeah. I'm like, listen, you might be my boss, but the only thing that qualifies you for You've leadership is that you read John anyway. Maxwell book. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. We've all been to Walmart. We've all bought those books. <laughs> uh hobby lobby that's hobby what lobby. Uh, yeah so yeah i love that though but that's yeah, what we all yeah, that's what we're absolutely. all doing let us know if you have any thoughts about that down there we've got uh janie carico one of our biggest fans always down I'm there one of your biggest fans janie. absolutely say she's that. always so hey, encouraging uh she said that a bird's nest found in your christmas tree is good luck i'm assuming she means uh genuine not artificial christmas tree uh that would be awesome <laughs> yeah right we life. actually did have that happen once with a real tree um but tori says down here that uh that tree died twice as fast as any other tree that we ever had so it didn't seem like good luck to us hmm. um so uh there was also oh uh who was it uh somebody mentioned that they do the christmas uh pickle tradition um oh yeah i saw that down uh, here i think it was cheryl klein i thought so i thought it was too i don't see it here right now um uh, but uh, that's awesome. Uh, we'd I need to shout out uh, Auntie Carla, Carla McCartney uh, in Parkersburg. She said we should dress up like the old guys in the balcony. That'd be great. Um, I there's only room for two, so we'll make fun of you. You'll be Fozzy. Yeah, I was about to say maybe you guys will be you'll gotta, do your gotta. you'll do your dad jokes. <laughs> was it uh, walk 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 walk? Yeah, no, I Scrooge. I want to be happy in, in life, Kermit. But I'm tiny like, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys have given us some good content for next year. I'm Maybe like, we should do Muppet Christmas or, for our video, like the Ghost of Christmas Past, Present, and we can have Ron as Christmas Future, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you can be Scrooge. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, uh, no, we, so, we have some good ideas awesome. circulating. We, I want to be the I old think man. We've in the got enough ideas to have like. Five more awesome Christmas. We're gonna do a Wonderful Life one time. <laughs> yeah, that there's that Clarence, depresses me. Clarence, let's do it in black and white too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I want to be the girl that says the the thing at the end about uh, angel. When, every time an angel, every, every time a bell, bell rings, an angel gets its wings. The only time, the only reason I knew that line because I, I didn't see the movie for the longest time is that the little the, the younger boy uh, Rusty is watching it in. Uh, Christmas vacation at that exact moment. And that's when the doorbell rings and all the family shows mm. up. That's the only reason why I knew the movie line and I watched it for the first time and it depressed me. Uh, mm. Just saying. That's a hard movie to watch. It's a beautiful movie. It's yeah. a wonderful line. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of I've only watched it once. If uh, you so have your years... life in order, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes it was Scott like seven years like... ago. <laughs> well, it's too relatable for Scott. Uh, now it'd be great. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of people in the comments tonight talking about um how awesome the home alone video was yeah so thank yeah, you guys yeah. for gassing uh, up on that i don't know if cheryl was uh joking about our past video like she already knew it or not but she asked if uh if we've run around as elf yet uh and so uh, i dropped that in the in the video down there of uh, our cbc elf mo uh, video from last year beautiful. yeah that was uh, a good it's one. pretty good 
Yep. I think Home Alone might be our best work yet. Oh, Shout yeah, out absolutely. Eli well, Williams. And Eli Caleb and Matthews. Caleb did all the Eli Williams, Caleb Matthews, Lunar Media. Yeah. Shout they out. They knocked it out. For all your church Christmas skit videos, you should go to them. Absolutely. <laughs> Next year. Um, Feature film. All right. Feature last film. question. And you guys in the comments, let us know. Eggnog, yes or no? Not a fan. I don't know. You've never had it? I have never tried eggnog. I've never had it. I've tried it like one time and just that was enough for me to be like. So uh, there's, there's what do you guys think down there in the comments? Egg, eggnog, yes or no? So something, I don't know why we did it growing up. My, we would always get it like once and, uh, uh, you know, a, a season. And but we always like cut it like half milk, half eggnog. And that seemed to make it a lot better because hmm. the yeah. textures are what a lot of people have a problem with. It's not yeah. the taste. It's the thickness. It's so thick. And creamy. I think if they didn't um, call, use the word egg, I was just about to say, it would, cause I, it's almost a milkshake. So what, what is eggnog? Maybe that's a dumb I'm, question. I don't know. Because the, the title alone yeah. makes me not like, what is give not another try. I, <laughs> if you mix eggs and nogs, so you far, we got two no's, one yes. Six uh, large eggnog, or six large eggs. Uh, what was the rest of it? I've lost it. Uh, I read Yvonne's comment wrong. I thought it said no to egg, yes to nog. <laughs> 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 Which was going to make me ask again, okay. what so is nog? <laughs> it's like heavy cream, milk, salt, nutmeg, and uh, six Sorry. eggs. Okay, you, I was like, there's got to be eggs in But there, you do right? heat it, um, um, and you temper the eggs, so it's not like raw eggs. We always do make, like, you know, like apple cider, like hot, hot yeah, cider. Yeah, I like, like that. Cider like, too, like yeah. we, that's good enough for me for a, a I'm holiday a, drink. I'm a wassail. Have you had that before? A wassail? Uh, <laughs> your dad cuts this with Diet Coke? Shut Ew. Up. That sounds disgusting. That sounds, well, it kind of <laughs> sounds like a, uh, like a float. root beer float. Yeah, like eggnog a, float. Um, an eggnog float. Huh. Uh, yeah. I want to know if my dad came it's up with that himself or if like, cause I, <laughs> he spends his day on Pinterest like, how do looking you, it up. How do you get to that? Yeah. Where, at what point in your life are you like, this eggnog needs a little diet <laughs> cake? Uh, Janie said that David Holm used to bring some to David late at night in a brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, er, so she said David earlier Holm, that you better have that at uh, Christmas Eve service. He said earlier that Joni has a secret recipe for uh, it. Oh, that's what's so supposed to that's be what, what it apparently is. is really good. Joni wins the comment of the the year. That's uh, amazing. Award down there. Well done. That is hey, fantastic. Merry Christmas, y'all. Uh, so glad you uh, joined us tonight. We're gonna be. Uh, kicking off the next year with some probably, I don't know, I would imagine two or three different episodes about Christian culture. Uh, you've got Christian movies. I grew up with some Christian video games. We set the bar tonight with apparently Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Uh, sure, so we'll yeah. talk about other ones like that. Tribulation trail type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even I think it'd be fun to do... Uh, <laughs> Some Chris, uh, Christian sayings. Yeah, things we say. Uh, yeah. Lord will and the creek don't rise. Uh, we could spend the entire 2024 going I just, through. Like, yeah. And we, like, just to let you guys know ahead of time, we spend a lot of time making fun of ourselves. Like, corny and Christian culture. Yeah. Absolutely. Bad church culture. Like, half of what we send each other is like, dude, I can't believe we. This church did this, or look how tacky this movie looks. And now, I'm, uh, hopefully, so, you can vibe with this. Yeah, this saying. If not, I'll get fired. We are Christians, fingers crossed. Despite Christian culture, not because of Christian culture. And I think you can probably look at some things. Uh, if you go back to the '70s, there's some cringy things that would actually probably make you sick. You got to be uh, honest about it, though, because I think what happens with people yes. is because it's got a Christian label on the front side of it. You feel like well, my allegiance is to Christ. I've got to say that this is the greatest thing ever. Right? No, nah. some, we can we can call nah. it what it is. Right. Not all of it is. We great. should have yeah. a whole episode of acronyms that Christians have come up with because there's mm. a bunch. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I'm so like for example. First, you got to explain what an acronym is to us. <laughs> explain what it is. <laughs> uh, Christmas. Christ has reason in saving stations, saving <laughs> the most. Most annoying. 
<laughs> annoying sinners. sinners. <laughs> there it is. We did it. <laughs> we did That's it. Us. That, yeah. The most annoying <laughs> sinners. So for, for example, though, in the Christian culture, <laughs> I look. You Listen, guys y'all know, need to post that on Facebook I, and tag Josh. I, I am not. I was gonna try to go weirder, and then you guys kept helping me find ones that really uh, like made sense. Uh, I think most Christian movies that I've seen in my life, any like Christian film. I've not been proud to say like <laughs> like be like hey you should go watch this right uh, I will say the chosen I have really oh, enjoyed yeah, it's it. I think it's I've like never seen actually it's super quality really good you know another uh, we got to end this thing I but another know. really good Christian movie that's not really Christian you've referenced this before is Hacksaw Ridge oh it's so, great movie have yeah. you seen that yeah so good. and I'm I'm sure there's gore and and oh it's awful vi- I'm, yeah. I don't even might have had a lot of cussing I can't remember it's but the, the violence is what gets you the 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 message of just one more yeah, yeah uh, just amazing. really will resonate with you so good. Uh, I thought that was Forrest Gump what's that yeah I gotta go find Bubba and he just keeps bringing back one person after another <laughs> I don't watch that film. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we are so We're happy done. to have had this Christmas uh, episode with you. Let us know if you like it live like this. Yeah, uh, and uh, let us know if if you don't, don't tell us. Yeah, well, no, tell us. Bag, this is harder bag, than bag doing Christian it. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Christian media. <laughs> we are part of it. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I was glad to be back with you guys. Yeah, it's good like to I see Josh. I forgot you were gone. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like you never even left. Good to be back at the table with my buds. So. Oh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, share this out. If you haven't shared it yet and you joined us a little bit late, share this. Go on YouTube, like, and subscribe. Um, we are just so excited for the weirdo fan base that we we have. And we want to keep interacting with you too. So drop in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on the jokes, the facts, the, the message tonight, whatever it is. We want to hear from you and we want to connect with you. Hey, let's get weird. Because normal isn't working. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.